the club, love, they have to tell you what they're going to do to you, to the people before they do it. It's like some kind of, I don't know if it's some kind of like religious belief, occult thing that they do. They just, you know, they have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And they put it right in front of your face and you don't even notice it. He says their favorite method is to put it in the movies. And I'll tell you, over the last several years, I've seen so many things in these movies that they put out and then they go on to happen in real life. And one of those was the oil rig in the BP oil spill. Two weeks before that happened, he was told by his elite friend, watch this movie, and it's called uh, Oil Storm. Between October 1st and January 1st of 2017, elections happen. Hillary Clinton rigged voting machines. 51 to 49 percent. Hillary just squeaked it out again. Of course, same number they love to use every freaking election. Uh, Donald Trump almost had it. He, uh, you know, Florida was the swing state, or you know, pick your favorite state. Florida was a swing state, and boy, was it a nail biter. But uh, she egged it out. She egged that one out, and she won. Now let's let the markets collapse. A new silver company for investors, with Keith Newmeyer agreeing to become a major shareholder. Luke Norman, co-founder of Gold Standard Ventures, is the new chairman, and the company has acquired three former First Majestic Silver properties. To learn more about this must-own silver stock, go to futuremoneytrends.com slash silver1. That's futuremoneytrends.com slash silver1. Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I had this interview scheduled now for a, a couple weeks, but with the events that have taken place, I wanted to talk to Joe, JSNP4. Uh, of course, you all know him. He's a returning guest. I want to get his thoughts on what we are seeing now with the current global collapse, but specifically what is going on with Deutsche Bank. And we have him on the line right now. His website is realistnews.net. Joe, thanks for coming on the show with me. Hey, pleasure to be back. I know we've been trying to get back with each other. You've been busy. I've been a little busy. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. yeah. No a lot of events happening. Well, hey, you know, no time like the present to get into this. Deutsche Bank is at all-time lows this week. And it's looking a great deal like Lehman Brothers did in 2008. I mean, you've seen these charts. I know you have. You know, it's just completely mimicking the same patterns here. But just so many converging events here coming into the fall. And could Deutsche Bank be the last straw that breaks the camel's back here for the global economy? It very well could be. You know, and I, looking at it all, it almost seems like that's what they're trying to do. Let, let uh, Deutsche Bank be the fall guy. I mean, Thursday, at one point, the stock for Deutsche Bank was down like, I think, 10%. And then, you know, it's like Friday, and it's a long weekend over there. They're going to have a bank, you know, banks will be closed Monday. So everyone's, you know, of course, talking. Uh, what's going to happen on Friday? And I'm thinking to myself, well, the stock could pro possibly go up to do a fake out like they like to do and then crush anybody that thought that they would get in on that action and short it. Or they can let it continue to fall another 10% or something on Friday, which will then open up the doors for when they finally come back around. Uh, well, I guess the market will still be trading on Monday even though the bank will be closed, you know, it'll just be more of that, but you never know what the club's going to do. So what happens on Friday? Everyone's waiting for news. What about Deutsche Bank? What about Deutsche Bank? And all of a sudden, you know, some agency out of France says, oh, uh, it was a news uh, agency out of France. Oh, we got, a, there's a rumor. There's a rumor that uh, the settlement that the U.S. is trying to uh, get out of Deutsche Bank, they're, they're trying to find them for like fourteen billion dollars, which has never been ha never happened, I think, in the history of too big to fail banks, do they find them that kind of money? It's usually a few billion at best. Usually, it's you know, pay a fine of like five hundred million. Um, worst case, maybe two or three billion. So Deutsche Bank a few weeks ago was like, well, we're going to try to work with the U.S. Uh, regulators in the Department of Justice because we think fourteen billion is a little bit, uh, or I mean, not a little bit, a lot high. And uh, we think maybe around three or four would be legitimate, so we're going to try to work on that. So what happens this, this Friday, just yesterday, which I don't know when you release this video, but we're talking about, you know, Friday of uh, what, the 30th of September. And, uh, oh, breaking news, there's a rumor 
that uh, it's going to be around a four and a half or a five whatever billion dollar settlement, not fourteen. Rumor, no, no, no meat to this at all. Markets freaking rally. Going to bank stock up ten percent, eleven percent, twelve percent, thirteen percent. Oh my God, it's grad. Doom cancels. Everything's fine. But I'm looking. I said, "Oh, on. they must have. The rumor must have turned the truth at this point. It's about thirteen, fourteen percent." I'm looking. I'm reading the news. Nope, nope, nope. One source. One source says there's a rumor. So here's the other thing. Let's just assume, come Monday, Tuesday, that the rumor ends up being true. U.S. regulators, the Department of Justice, yeah, we've agreed. It could be about four and a half billion. That's the, that'll be the settlement, and uh, that's it. Well, a couple of weeks ago, they were already saying, look, if, if this thing gets settled for anything less or anything more than like three and a half billion, doom is on for Deutsche Bank anyways. It's too much. So even if the rumor is true, it's already too much. And they, and they were saying it. If it's over three and a half, billion, it's, it's going to be too much anyways, because there's other issues they have to deal with, and they've got to set aside money. Not only that, you've got uh, at least 10, they said, at least 10 panicked hedge funds and big investors pulling out of Deutsche Bank. They wouldn't want, want to use you guys to clear our derivatives and other stuff. They're pulling out money as well. So you're draining the one thing that this bank needs, and that's liquidity, money. So, again, this is just rumors. It's nonsense news. It's it's what they always do. They had the, uh, was it Mario Draghi, I think, came out, ECB, somebody else, I think Merkel was talking, and one of the regulators even, oh, yeah, no, everything's fine. They'll be, yeah, this bank, we're not going to bail it out. It doesn't need to be. It's fine. Well, when you hear that, history tells us it's the opposite. When, That's what I was when you ask get the you. big, you know, are they the big bail weeks coming out. What's that? Well, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think they are going to ultimately bail them out, or are they going to allow the bank to fail? Is it what is the interest in this situation on what to do going forward? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's it's really hard to call because just like with Brexit, remember, you know, the UK were leaving the European Union, first country to do so, and it was a big country because they contributed a hell of a lot of money to the European Union, which is funny because as soon as they left, they instantly go after Apple. Oh, you need to give us billions and billions in uh, back taxes that you didn't know before the UK left, but now that they left, we don't have that money. You owe it now. Wow. Isn't that funny? But they left, and what did it, they say? Oh, it's it, the markets are going to go down. It's not going to be good. It's going to cause major problems. Try to fear everyone and having them not leave, and they left. And nothing. Again, the doom, doom canceled. Economic doom canceled. Everything's fine. You know, as a matter of fact, what have we seen in the markets? Markets been rallying. So they can always use these things, though, for the opposite reason. If they want to crash. They'll use the same news. You know, it's like, just like, you know, this, this uh, news on Deutsche Bank, markets rallying. What, what good news is a rumor? Rumor is bad news because it's, it's fake. It's a rumor. You don't know. And they haven't even agreed. It's a, it's, it's a rumor saying we think that's what they're going to do. Not even that. It's absolutely certain. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're tidying it up. It's, it's a done deal. It wasn't even a rumor like that. It, you think this is what's going to happen. Oh, markets rally, markets rally. Well, you isn't know, it so typical of the markets just moving on such arbitrary news? You know the, these estimates in the markets, and then you know uh, uh, above or below estimates, and it's still horrible. Uh, you know the market's moving because they're going to not raise interest rates. I mean, such arbitrary news, and yet they, we get these massive you know reactions in the market, and and that's to me what we're seeing here. Uh, Joe Lindsay Williams, I mean, obviously a popular uh, economist, and uh, you know minister someone you've been following for a while now you know is this in line with what he's been talking about the collapse that's coming uh here and into the next year it is but at the same time it is only going to happen when like we always refer to these guys the club when the club decides this is the time this is the reason we're going to do it so Let's let's look up. Let's talk about something else that's kind of tied into this, and that is these 28 pages, the 9/11 report. They're still classified, but they kind of got a little bit declassified. We can kind of see what it said. It essentially says Saudi Arabia, the hijackers were all all 15 of the 19, 9/11. They were Saudi descent, therefore Saudi 
uh, and also it, it implicated them in, in funding. It, it showed that the Saudis helped fund part or whatever of 9-11, the terrorists, therefore they're complicit in some respect, and up until now, because they're not listed as a terrorist country, we can't sue them, our people can't sue them for any reason. So this law that they just passed now says you can sue them. And what did Saudi Arabia say a few weeks ago? If you guys pass this law, we were going we're gonna to dump all U.S. Treasury assets we have and, and all other U.S. assets that we have. And, it's, you know, and then they're commenting, not them, but, the, you know, our media is commenting, well, we think there's probably around maybe $800 billion that the Saudis could dump. And if they flood, you know, they dump all that on the market, it could have a you know, bad effect on the economy. And I'm, th- I'm hearing this, and I'm thinking, no, 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 it won't. It has absolutely nothing to do. Our TARP fund bailout was $800 billion. What happened? Markets went to rally after that. The Federal Reserve added almost five, five and a half trillion to their balance sheet, giving backdoor bailouts to the banks that aren't even included in anything that we read about. Markets rallied. Our ten trillion debt that we had when uh, Obama stepped foot in office, nine point something ten trillion, is now nearing twenty. Markets have been rallying. So this is nonsense to, to suggest that Saudi Arabia alone is going to, you know, cause this market crash. But again, timing's everything. These 28 pages have been classified for the last 15 years, since, since 2001, 9-11. And they've come out like two or three years ago where, you know, the senators went in, we got declassified, uh, or we, we went and saw the class, we had to sit in a special room where we couldn't take anything with us, we could just barely take notes, just that, and, you know, we gotta, we, we've got to declassify these pages. There's stuff in here that I, we didn't know and puts a whole different, you know, paint job on the whole 9-11 story and this this has to get out for us to move forward and I'm thinking holy crap what's in there well t- three senators saying that what did they find oh my god you know can't wait to see this well three years you know two three years ago what, what happened with it so here we are at a very important date every year end of September beginning of October fiscal year as the United States market crashes historically forever take place during the same time frame September to October, uh, and we have the Saudis now pissed off because the, the Senate and Congress came together, and on the 23rd of September, Obama vetoes it. No, nah, we, we don't want to do that. We're going to veto. We don't want to allow our people to sue them. So he vetoes it. They already had a supermajority anyways to, to pass it. So what do they do next Wednesday, which was just this, this past Wednesday? We're going to vote on it again ourselves, and we do have the supermajority, so his veto has not been bypassed. This is going to be law. So since when do the Democrats and Republicans get together so much so that they can override a veto of the president? And we're talking about this president, Obama, with his huge, you know, supporting Democrats. And they decided, no, we don't like you this time, buddy. We liked you through the health care fiasco. We liked you through National Defense Authorization Act. We liked you through... Uh, the budget, defense budget going up, we said it wouldn't. We liked you through everything, buddy. But this one, we're going to screw you on this one. We're going to go ahead and vote with the Republicans. So that well, we why is that? Why are they so against Obama on this one and, and, and tied together not, with the Republicans? They're not necessarily against him. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. It is now time to let this play out. So if I'm a fly on the wall looking at this saying, these people don't do this, why the hell are they doing it now? tells me, well, Saudi Arabia made a threat. We're going to dump these assets. We want Saudi Arabia to dump the, threat, to dump the assets. We can then use that news. Oh, market's crashing. Market's crashing because uh, Saudi Arabia just dumped. Well, they actually had a little more than they said they did. They had $1.2 uh, you know, uh, and it's really hurting global markets now, and there's a massive sell-off, and it's, it's the Saudis, so now everyone's going to hate Saudi Arabia all of a sudden. You did this, and I'm sitting back here saying, wait a minute, 800 billion TARP funds, markets rallied. Five plus trillion dollar debt on the Federal Reserve. Balance sheet, markets rally. I mean, what the hell is going on? What are you talking about? You know, so it's like they're, they're getting ready to use this for some reason, or else they wouldn't have done it. It's that simple. Saudi Arabia has filled the back pockets of so many of these congressmen and senators. There's no way they would normally just do this unless they're trying to accomplish a goal that they just don't talk about, they pretend not to know, and they do know. I mean, these people know that we've got 
you know, we've added ten trillion in debt in eight years, the most incredible amount ever in the history of this country. It's, and it's supposed to be considering the short amount of time, eight years, one one president, uh, two terms. So I think they understand and they know there's a big crash coming. The dollar's on its way out. We've got China, literally, uh, does it happen today or tomorrow, I think? They're joining the SDR, the IMF's Special Drawing Rights Currency Basket, which is, uh, we were a big part of that. Same with uh, the UK and the Euro. And now... Or not the UK, but the e- the European Union and the Euro, and then now we're going to have China in there with us, first time ever. And they said something interesting though. Uh, before China can do that, which they said it has to be Friday, which I never heard any news. Of. I don't know if you have, but they have to disclose how much gold they actually have in order to be a part of this basket of currencies. And I haven't heard the news yet, so I'm like waiting, wait, wait, wait a minute. You guys are supposed to be doing this today or tomorrow. You know, the first of October or second of October when you actually join this this basket of currencies, how come I haven't heard the news yet of how much gold you guys own? Because, you know, the rumor, and it's not, I don't think it's a rumor, I think it's truth, is that they've got a lot more gold than anybody has ever suspected. Well, and they disclosed their gold holdings not that long ago, and it wasn't that much, not as much as everyone thought it would be. So they Did could they, still what, do that was, again. How long ago was that, do you think? Oh, when China announced that, wasn't it... Yeah. A, a year ago or so? The... Yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering if it's, you know, either A, are they going to tell us the truth? Hey, this is how much we actually have? Or, you know, it's it's going to be some lumber, like you said, a year ago, and it's like, oh, it's, yeah, it's just kind of in line with, you know, what the World Gold Council says. But, you know, when I'm sitting there looking at every month how much, you know, you see China just pulling in tons and tons and tons and tons of it, and this has been going on for years and years and years. I've, I've I wonder what it's actually going to be, but the news is saying before they enter this SDR uh, currency, their their currency can join that. They have to disclose the amount of gold they have. So I'm thinking, well, if they just did, if you're saying they did it a year ago, why do they have to do it again so quick? Well, I was Whatever, one, I, I think that last time they did it, and there was a lot of speculation on this, is that they were just trying to get their foot in the door, not disclose too much okay. gold, just to be able to, you know, show that hey, we we're not, you know hedging so greatly against the the fiat currency system but if they do come out and show that hey we got a massive amount of gold hey i mean that that just makes a statement against uh, i get what everyone believes in that the the current fiat system is unstable well here's here's another interesting thing when you were bringing up lindsey williams he said a long time ago years ago the club, love, they have to tell you what they're going to do to you, to the people, before they do it. It's like some kind of, I don't know if it's some kind of like religious belief, occult thing that they do. They just, you know, they have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And they put it right in front of your face, and you don't even notice it. He says their favorite method is to put it in the movies. And I'll tell you, over the last several years, I've seen so many things in these movies that they put out, and then they're going to happen in real life. And one of those was the oil rig in the BP oil spill two weeks before that happened. He was told by his elite friend, watch this movie, and it's called uh, Oil Storm. He watched it, and he said, oh my God, this is exactly what just happened. This is incredible. So he was kind of hinting to him. We knew this was going to happen. Um, how or why, I don't know, but one movie people should go look at. It's an old movie from 1981. It's called Rollover. It's about a stock market crash of epic proportions. The dollar dies. The Saudis, get this, the Saudis are dumping their U.S. assets, and it causes a panic, and a sell-off, and dollars are a massive problem for the U.S. economy. starts crashing. It's like, you know, the dollar starts diving. It's chaos because the Saudis sold their assets, is what this movie is about. You know, Joe, Rollover is the name of it. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Not it. Name of the movie is Rollover. I haven't seen it yet, and I definitely am going to check it out. I've heard a lot of uh, my guests talk about that one, though, but uh, I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, what's interesting about Deutsche Bank, and this kind of takes me back to Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, is that during the banking crisis, the dollar saw a big surge. And yeah, especially, and especially if we see this triggered in, in Europe. I mean, that was kind of something that had happened here in the U.S., and obviously spiraled spidered out around the world but i mean if the crisis the epicenter is in europe 
I mean, how much more are people going to to run to the U.S. dollar as a safe haven? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, with, if you look at the precious metal sales, you know, they're still, every year, they get. it seems like they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger in sales, both gold and silver, especially silver. So, and this isn't just from people in America buying these things. You know, there's no way that only America is the reason these, you know, they're like breaking records every year. I, I think that other countries, of people in other countries are realizing, you know, the old story of, oh, go to the American dollar, it's a safe haven. When there's trouble in your currency, your currency or anything you're investing in over here, go to America, that's the go-to place. I think people are realizing, man, they've got almost $20 trillion in debt now. They're, you know, I don't know if I feel comfortable putting my money over there. They have the, This crisis started in America with the banking system over there. Sure, they bailed them out, but look what's happened now. There's still no recovery, especially in those countries. They're seeing it the worst. You know, you look at Greece and Cyprus and uh, even now Italy. I mean, these countries are recognizing we have some major financial problems here. You know, the Italian banks are in deep trouble, just, you know, almost as bad as uh, Deutsche Bank, really. You know, but I don't know. I, I, I think some people are still going to do that. You know, they're going to, oh, do the old, you know, history says to go to America. That's what we're going to do. And I think that's the whole reason why our dollar went up. You know, the dollar index, it's, you know, at one point it was down in the 70s, I think, mm -hmm. you know, years ago. And then it, you know, the crisis happens, it's back up and 80, 90, we're, all, you know, nearing 100, we're in the 90s again. It's like, it's, this is, you know, this is like fiction. Who writes, you know, who writes this stuff? How is this even possible? How, how does a country that had $10 trillion in debt that now has 20 in eight years double their debt to that extent? How the hell does their dollar go up in value? Against the again the basket of currencies of in the uh, you know when you look at the, the USD versus Euro it's it's um, or the dollar what they call the dollar index it's it's the dollar against the Euro and a couple other currencies heavily weighed by the Euro and it's like oh well it's up to ninety you know it's up to the ninety index it's it's stronger today or, or or this week or whatever versus like seventy something cents you know or seventy points on that same index a few years ago. And it's funny because, like, what actually happened? Did we really see, like, price prices affected by this? You're talking 70-something cents to, you know, to 90 cents equivalent on this index. What's, you know, the euro's uh, still stronger than the dollar is anyways. You know, it's worth more. It's just, to me, it's just like you look at this stuff, but it's just numbers. It's just these, these people in the club rigging everything. The numbers mean nothing. Just like the news on Deutsche Bank. And it means nothing. Markets rallied. They can take the same news, and I've seen this numerous times. You have news of something. Oh, markets rally, and then then a little while later, the same kind of news, almost identical, just a different place or whatever, happens. And oh, markets are down today because uh, some fighting over in uh, Syria and the uh, you know, pipeline got ruptured. Well, hold on. Last time that pipeline got ruptured, the markets rallied. You know, it's just it, this is all just a book or, or a movie script, you could say, and we're all sitting back watching this movie play out right in front of us, and. We don't know exactly when it's going to end or how it's going to end. For sure, we've got a pretty good idea. And there's a lot of people that will try to come out. Like you got um, uh, Bo Polney, who's just absolutely certain. I know the day and, you know, that the crash is going to happen, and this is the final leg, and this and that. And I'm like, in all honesty, Bo, you, you don't know, man. Hmm. You can't because the club does things when they want to do it, when it fits their timeline. You might get lucky here and there and say, oh, I've got, you know, got this top here and this bottom here. But then it just keeps going on. It rallies again, and it, he, had, you know, and the poor guy changes his dates a little bit, and says, "Okay, well, yeah, you know, we missed out because of this." And it's like again, Bo, you, Bo has the right idea. He understands what's happening. He sees what's going to happen. But when you stick your neck out and say, "On October first or October second, doom is on, and this is going to happen," it's like, uh, I don't think so." Because now that you said it, the club could just say, "Oh, we had this." A lot of people talk about that on the internet. Let's just keep going. We're not ready yet. And the next thing you know, nothing happens. Markets rally some more. The Deutsche Bank comes out. Another banking problems come out. Okay, it's now. It's going to happen now. No, doom, just like Friday. Doom averted. Deutsche Bank's back up 14%. Uh, all is fine. Truth of the matter is it's not fine. And yeah. this has to be dealt with. Right? This, this is going to be dealt with. And the way they're going to do it is through these derivatives. And Deutsche Bank has the largest amount of derivatives compared to any other bank. So You're right. when the club is ready... That's when they're going to do the trigger. So the trigger is going to, to me, be Deutsche Bank. If you have the largest amount of derivatives, you're going to be going down with the ship. So you're going to be leaning brothers times five or ten, and you're going to get the blame for this and whatever. So 
that's why I felt like maybe that that was why the Department of Justice said originally we're going to fine you for fifteen billion. And what if we find out Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, you know what? It was just a rumor. Yeah, it was a rumor. Doom is back on. The Department of Justice four and a half five uh, billion. We're not happy with that. We want more. Doom's back on. And you know, it's when these people want it. Now Lizzie Williams was saying, you know, have your have your crap in order by October first. He's but he, but then he kept reiterating. Almost like he was trying to give a hint, but couldn't. Like for some reason, that by January first, you know. In other words, uh, maybe I took it this way: as between October first and January first of 2017, is the timeline that they that they're really going to do it. I've been saying since last year. I said I felt like we may not see any doom. September is going to come. October is going to come. Wow, nothing actually really happened. And then all of a sudden, elections happen. Hillary Clinton rigged voting machines. 51 to 49 percent. Hillary just squeaked it out again. Of course, same number they love to use every freaking election. Uh, Donald Trump almost had it. He, uh, you know, Florida was the swing state, or you know, pick your favorite state. Florida was a swing state, and boy, was it a nail biter. But uh, she egged it out. She egged that one out, and she won. Now let's let the markets collapse, or if by chance. Even if by chance Donald wins somehow, and I don't think that's going to happen because these, I've, I've been seeing it already. No one's showing up to her rallies over and over. She's going to gymnasiums. I'm just Google mapping the spot where she's, I'm looking at her, you know, event list on her own website. Where's she going to be? Okay, let me look at this place on Google Earth. Let me zoom in. It's a freaking gymnasium. Oh, is it like a boys and girls club? What the hell's going on? You're a, you're a presidential candidate. Nobody's coming. So she can't possibly win, no matter where she goes. Nobody's showing up. People don't like when it. I say nobody, I mean two, three hundred people, maybe. And there's videos of people inside. They're saying, "Oh my God, look at this! There's nobody freaking here." So she can't possibly win. But if she wins, I feel like that's when they'll let loose on the market after after whoever wins. And then, again, I think they're going to try to rig it for her. But if not, it'll and by chance Donald gets it. If he gets it, they're going to really let loose, in my opinion, because the president in charge during any type of major collapse or downturn is going to be the one known. You were in charge when this happened, and they'll have partial blame on that particular person. But I felt like if they let the market crash right after Hillary takes office, you can't blame her. She just took office. What the hell does she have to do with this? And matter of fact, you can't blame Barack Obama because he's leaving, and he held it together this whole time. So that's why I feel like Lindsay was saying between October and January 1st, the election will already be over. Well, of course, it's November, so not October, but that's after October. The election will happen. Then we're going to have this crashing take place. And then whoever steps into office can deal with it. I just don't think they're going to allow Donald in, in any way, shape, or form. I don't think they're going to kill him. I think they'll do what they've been doing the last several cycles. We own all the voting machines. We can rig them. It's just it's just software. I did a video a few weeks ago. I do uh, some software development, VisualBasic.net. So I said, you know what? I'm going to pause my video while I was doing it for YouTube. I paused it, opened up my my uh, program, and, and wrote a a quick sample of how I could rig it to do something without you ever knowing. You click a button, you think your vote's counted. You click that button, you think it's counted, and at the end, it tallies it. However, I programmed it to do it. So this is this is so easy to rig the elect. I don't think they're gonna have to kill Donald or you know JFK him as they say. They'll just steal it from him and say, oh, but it was close, guys. Look, it was fifty-one forty-nine. He almost had it. Try again next time. And the people, I think, this time are gonna say, you know what? I we used to buy that line, but we have something now: the internet, YouTube, videos, people on scene reporting, and we can get our own access. We don't have to watch your news sites anymore. Your uh, you know mainstream media news we can see nobody practically is voting for this woman we see you people lying to us when she's dragged like a almost a lifeless body into the span legs trailing behind her scraping the ground oh cnn she uh we dragged uh she uh had dragged she uh stumbled she clearly stumbled into the van excuse me mm. her foot her shoe was left behind like you know uh cinderella where is the prince going to grab the shoe and find her and put it, see if it matches? You know, hey, wait a minute, you dropped something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The woman 
again, we're seeing right through this. You can tell because no one's showing up. And after that incident happened, it was like, whoa, okay. I think a whole lot of people said, okay, wait a minute. There really is something to this woman's health. I know it was conspiracy before, and I know the news media said it was nonsense, but I just saw this for myself on my own two eyes on a very high-quality video. Uh, this lady's got a problem, and I think that was the, the turning point. That just every poll that has been coming out now practically, even on a lot of the mainstream sites, are saying, up, oh, Donald's edging her out now. Of course, the only one poll recently after the debate, CNN. No, no, we still have Hillary won that one. You know, you got this guy... This weird guy, as soon as they were done with the speech, the uh, um, debate, he, he's walking up to her podium. He's, like, dismantling stuff. He's taking stuff out of it. He's grabbing things, opening the door to the bottom, pulling stuff out, kind of hiding it. Then the uh, lesser hold walks up. He kind of shakes his hand. He hands him off something. What What in the hell? What is this? What in the hell is going on? You look at Donald Trump, nothing happens. He walks away from the podium. He waves. He shakes some hands like you'd expect. As soon as it happens... They're scrambling to go to her podium. He's, like, trying to do it selfly. He's looking around. I'm like, what the heck? You know, I, I urge anyone to go back if you didn't see this. Go watch the debate again at the very end. When they both are done and they step away, watch this weird guy come out multiple times. He goes over. He's hiding stuff in his hands. He, you know, Lester Holt, the, the moderator, gets out, goes and kind of sees the guy, and he hands off something to him. What the hell? Is, what is this? You know, it's like, I don't know what the hell's going on, but this is not normal. And these videos are coming out over and over and over again. Many, 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 many people are seeing these and saying again, man, this lady, is, she really is crooked. Or, you know, there's really some stuff here. So if the elections were to happen today and not be rigged, the, there would be an absolute landslide because every non-mainstream media poll that has taken place, and there's been some pretty huge ones, when I talked about my videos a few, several weeks back, and they said we, we have over 100,000 people not this crappy here on TV. Oh, a thousand uh, people were polled today. A thousand? There's 350 million people in the country. What the hell is this thousand crap? So we got 100,000 people, and they show 68 or something percent to here, Louis, like 30, you know, 2 percent. And another poll comes out somewhere else. Same, almost the identical numbers. So it's literally a two-thirds difference. There are two-thirds. If this, is, if this election happened, you would hear not 51, 49 you would hear 60-something to, you know, 30-something is how that would probably go. So she doesn't stand a chance. But again, they're going to try, in my opinion, to rig these polls like they always do. They own the voting machines. Every state in this country pretty much has these machines, and there's always a problem, and they're going to they're gonna rig this so she'll win. And I'm curious to see how the American people deal with it because I think they're going to realize this time we know it's rigged. We did it in front of us. We're telling you we want a recount. And the answer is going to be, there's not going to be a recount. We had our election officials in every single state check the machine, and the machines functioned as proper. There's nothing to see here. And you're going to say, wait a minute, there's exit polls that also say the same thing we're saying. This thing was rigged. You're going to say, we checked the machines, we did a test, and they worked fine. And then wow. the people are going to, you know, do we think the people are going to sit back for four more years and say, well, Let's now work on getting these machines taken out. Let's let's uh, let's go to our elected officials and ask them to, you know, revoke these machines and go back to paper ballots. It's not going to happen. So, what choice do the people have? The people are going to have to get a little hands on and make some change. That's what history says, anyways. That the people will be getting hands on, but you have to get screwed really, really bad first. People have to be hurt. They have to be damaged. Uh, whether that's financially or some other way, before they really, really, really want to get up and physically change things. But, you yeah, know, Joe, maybe Barack... I, I was ahead. just going to say, I, I, there is no way people are, are loving Hillary Clinton. She really has no charisma. Her lines were totally scripted, I mean, in that last debate. And, and the touching know, of the face, right? The touching of the face. She, I, I did it myself because people were saying, look, go look at her previous speeches. I'm talking recent ones. Go back as far as you want to go, months, weeks, whatever. Listen to her speak, watch the whole thing. She never, ever touches her face. And all of a sudden, during this debate, she touched it like six times at a key moments where she needed Lester Holt to step in, give her a zinger or whatever. It, it was, again, it, you can see that if you have eyes to see, 
Yeah. Now, back in the day when you didn't have the internet, you wouldn't have been able to go back and watch this again. You wouldn't may not even notice it happened. I didn't even notice it while I was watching it, and I think I'm kind of an awake guy. I didn't even notice it myself. I'll just focus on the debate and what's her answers. And then you go back and watch it, and you look at stuff. Oh, wait a minute. There's a connection here. She touched her face, and then this happened. She touched her face again. It happened again. She touched her face a third time, and they're doing it again. Fourth time, fifth time, sixth. Now we have a pattern, right? So you can go to the Internet and view this stuff. So you could, you know, the Internet is probably one of the worst things they that got created for the club because we get to see what's really happening, and we don't just have to listen to their mainstream you know, news or watch on TV and then turn it off and go away. Yeah. So, well, and then even when she fell and she was you know, getting into the car there in 9-11, it was shocking to me that the Secret Service, the way they acted, they didn't turn around and were like, oh my gosh, can we help you? It was more like, yep. nothing let's to see here, people. Block the camera. Yep. Let's get her in the car. And that, to me, was a huge red flag. And, you know, quite honestly, this health issue is a major wild card for her than something that I don't think that they were expecting. I mean, they could anticipate economic things, maybe some political things. But this health issue, this is something that they I don't think they've been anticipating. Uh, and it, yeah. it could be a major game changer for her. I agree. And I think they probably had, I think they probably had conversations like Hillary, we, you know, let, honey, let's you know you, we love you. You're part of the club, but let's let's let one of our other you know let's let someone else come in. And she's probably like, absolutely not. I waited when Barack got, got the nomination. I was going to take it then. And you said let him have it another term. And you promised me it'd be my turn now. Because remember when in the, when she was running against Barack Obama, when Hillary was running against him, they were the press was on the airplane. And they're waiting for her to and Brock, we want to talk to them and this and that. And the plane is taking off on the runway with them on it. And no Brock or Hillary. And they're saying, what's happening? What, what are we doing? We're taking off. We're going to meet. We're going to go to. Hold on. We were supposed to be flying with them and touching down with them and interviewing them on this plane. We're, they're not even here? Yeah, yeah. They, they uh, you know, and the, and the press secretary had to scramble for some answer why they couldn't be there. It just so happened to be one of the years where the big club members, the Bilderberg meeting, was taking place. And that is where Barack and Hillary actually went. And it was there where they decided, we're going to give Barack this one again, and Hillary, you'll get the next one. You'll get a good position. She became Secretary of State and all that crap, but you'll get the next one. So in her, in her mind right now, I did what I was told. I played by the club rules. Damn it, it's my turn, and I'm not letting anything get in the way of me becoming the first female president of the United States of America. That entitlement that's why mentality. She, she, she has this entitlement mentality all over her. It's, and you see it even when she speaks. And even when, even when her health issues started to become more, more frontline news and she collapsed and all these different things, I mean, you could just see the desperation on her face. Like, hey, the, no, I am not going to let this thing slip away from me. And I, I just, I just can't stand that woman. And it's, it's. I would okay. much rather see Donald Trump. Um, you know, I know he's probably not your, he's not your most libertarian candidate. You know, whatever. You're right. But You're I, right. I would much rather see him with out of the two. You know, Donald Trump all the way. Um, Joe, Joe, I wanted to just mention something you, you said, Bo Polney. So I, I tend to uh, agree with you, hard to predict things. But I must say, his last call now is on track. And especially with Deutsche Bank, his last call now was that the markets finally peaked uh, Friday, September 28th. That, that, that would be the last day. Everything's kind of down from there. We did our last interview on the 27th. And we'll see. It might coincide with his latest prediction, coincidence or not. You know, his cycle work, whatever. Uh, that's that's where uh, he's hanging his hat on. And uh, I, I'm very. What interested. day? What day? Did he give you the date on that one? What was the we did the interview on the 27th, and he was saying like that. The, well, the 27th was the final market peak, so that's not the top of the market, but it's the final top, and everything after that day will be down. So we'll see if we go into uh, you know, October here and into the, the, the new year, what, what goes on. But that, that's his latest call.
Yeah, and, and, and with it, you know, I, and I like Bo. I like Bo a lot, actually. I just, you know, it's like, because I've had people email me, hey, he said this was on this time, and it, it, Joe, when are you going to grill him, man? You know, you, you talked to him and, and, and said some of the stuff he said, and this came and went, and, and he got it wrong. And I'm like, okay, look, let's, give him, let's give him a look. Maybe he's just slightly off, and then sure enough, it, it kind of made me appear, maybe he was just slightly off. And, and then, so it's like, sometimes he's on, and then sometimes he's not quite on, and but then, then, like, I wait a little bit, and he's back on again. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to, I'm not going to come out, I don't want to grill anybody, first of all. You know, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but I, I'm not sure what he's looking at for sure. But, again, I I know what the club has, and the club has control over everything. They control prices of everything. They have, they run all the derivatives. They have all of the, the futures contracts on the COMEX market. They can pump the stock market up at the press of a button, like Big Swirly says, the press of the button. They can set gold to you know thousands or they can set it down to zero if they wanted to so i don't know if some of what he looks at is just the club gearing us up for what they got planned and the making it look like that but again on, on friday with deutsche bank everyone's thinking it's going to get smashed oh it's going to do what it did yesterday start a 10 percent drop friday's going to come it's going to crash too up up back up 14 percent. so i don't know it's almost like there's some group that wants this thing to crash, and then another group, oh, let's pump the market back up, you know, temporarily. I just, it just it doesn't even make sense sometimes, but the, I, I think the ultimate goal, markets are absolutely going to crash, but I feel like they're only going to crash when the club says so. And I personally believe they do not want markets crashing before the election because at that point, if these markets crash after what Donald Trump has said a few times now this year, guys... The markets are going to crash. You know, he actually said it, the markets are going to be going down badly. We're going to have an economic problem. The markets are going to go down. Hillary Clinton has not said one peep about markets like that at all. So if this happens, the markets crash before the elections take place, all of a sudden, hey, Donald's going to come out. Hey, guys, I told you twice, at least twice now. Look what we got here. This is what we have to deal with. Now, i got a lot of work to do. i got to fix this, right? They're going to vote him in. I mean, even if they try to rig the votes, it's just more power to... They, we definitely want Donald so that when they rig it, people are going to really know there's no way. That's why I feel there will be no market crash until after the elections. That's my opinion. I could absolutely be wrong, but I think that that's what's going to happen. You know, and it makes a lot of sense, and especially with the way things are going. You know, I, I don't trust the, the system, and it's controlled by such a small group of people, and the, the establishment in my opinion, is is losing control. Um, I know you say that, hey, you know, they control this, they control it. It's always when they allow something to happen. But, you know, manipulation can go on so long until they do, right. do lose control because ultimately there's a breaking point for anything. And I agree. I actually agree completely with what you're saying. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I can see it too. These people are losing control. You look at people like... Uh, uh, what's his name, Brzezinski or whatever, he's one of these elitist mouthpieces. And he was, he's actually been on record saying it, you know, yeah, we're... And Hillary, a few years ago, was saying, guys, talking to her club, and, but the, the public comment was, guys, were losing the information war. Guys, were losing the information war. That's just it. Information. Mm-hmm. Internet, full of it. And, we, and it's recording it. So we, the information is, hey, you're lying to us, and you can't cover up anymore because you're losing the information war. You have other sources proving you wrong. So I do agree with you that the club is losing power. And even Lindsey Williams said, these people think they're God. They may think they're God. They may think they have all this control, but they're, they're just human. And they don't always get their way. He says just almost always they do, because ever since I've been knowing them, there hasn't been a thing that they told me that would happen that didn't happen. Sometimes the timeline's put off quite a bit, but it happens. He said, but they're not gods. They're having problems, and right now, as of this year, in his last two videos, uh, DVDs he did, he said, look, he, these guys are having a struggle right now. The guys that I know are very old. You know, one of them's already died a few years ago. I've got another one. He's old. Um, and they, you know, the old get replaced by the, the younger elite, you know. And he says the there's kind of a rift right now between the old and the young. The old want to do things the way. They don't want any problems. They want it nice and smooth. The young, they don't want it nice and smooth. They're taking too long. Let's get over with. Let's just do this already. Get the collapse going, you know. And they're kind of infighting, so to speak. So I think that's just going to, you know, help them unravel themselves anyways if, if what he's saying is true. And like you said, you can only do something for so long. 
can only, you know, do stuff in the dark. Once the light's shined on it, it has to go away ultimately. The question is when and how soon and that sort of thing. But I think they're going to try to do this. They're going to try to pull their new world order crap on us, one world currency. I think it's going to ultimately fail ethically. And that'll be their, essentially their demise. I think that'll, that'll be when they realize we used to have power. We used to be this and that, and we are not anymore. And they're going to be scrambling. Question is, are they going to be so upset about that that they take us into World War Three? Mm. That's something we definitely all don't want. But they may say, you know what, screw it, we're going out with the bang. Well, there you have it, everyone. Uh, Joe, uh, his YouTube channel, Jay Snip for uh, his website, realistnews.net. Uh, Joe, if you you know want to share any news about your your website or your YouTube channel or anything that you have exciting uh please do so or just let everyone know about what you do yeah if uh if you want to check me out i'd say the best place is my youtube channel because i at least monday through friday anyways i'm doing probably uh two videos a day there's always something to talk about when i first started my channel in 2000 late 2009 or early 2010 i had to go find stuff to talk about today two videos a day isn't enough to talk about what's going on and try to keep people informed is, you know, it's some really important stuff, but I don't want to overload people with doom either. So it's like, here's two videos a day, but I'm trying to just keep as many people as informed as possible. So if you want to, you know, stay informed, check me out on YouTube, Jason F4, or just search for Realist News on YouTube. I'll also come up there. Joe, thanks for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate it, man. And, you know, we're going to have to do an update here, especially if we do see things un unravel the way you know, so many are saying, you know, going into January. So uh, again, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Anytime.